not my way to love you just when no one's looking. It's not my way to take your hand if I'm not sure. It's not my way to let you see what's going on inside of me. When it's a love you won't be needing, you're not free. Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and this is episode two of Pass Gas with Doug. No, don't go away. Let me explain. Pass Gas stands for Pen Acquisition Syndrome and Gear Acquisition Syndrome. And this is a support group video for suffering pen addicts where we soothe our burning needs to acquire more and more fountain pens, inks, accessories by watching pen porn online. Today's episode is a field trip to my favorite drug supply, pen supplier, Reed Stationers, a family owned and operated store for more than 25 years in downtown Calgary. Today I've just come from the Glenbow Museum taking in an art exhibit with my friend and pass gas enabler, and I couldn't pass up an opportunity to visit Reed's. So let's go in the store and take a look around right now. So, thanks for joining me on this second episode of Pass Gas with Doug. I'm glad to know so many of you appreciated the first episode enough to warrant a second. Of course, this is all about those who suffer from pen and gear acquisition syndrome and is an outlet to live vicariously through pen porn and virtual pen acquisition. Remember, the mere fact that you've recognized that you have a problem is the first step towards some solutions. As I said in the introduction, I was at Reed's Stationers in downtown Calgary today. This store has an amazing collection of incredible writing instruments. My pen friend, who was with me on this trip, simply refused to go in. Abstinence is one solution, but not one for me. Before I take you on a tour of the store and focus on some specific pens that I saw behind glass, I want to take you on a tour of the exhibit I was at at the Glenville Museum this morning. For those of you only interested in pen porn, like most porn, you can skip ahead to the interesting bits. Just use the timestamps in the description I put there for you. Those of you on mobile devices, get yourself a computer. The exhibit was of photographs by an American photographer, unknown during her lifetime, named Vivian Meyer. Meyer was born in New York to a French mother who returned to France with young Vivian after her husband left. Vivian returned to New York when she was older and had to learn to speak English by going to the movies. She became a professional nanny and served two families in Chicago and then New York for about 10 years each. The head of one of the families recently described Meyer as the real-life Mary Poppins. Mayer took up photography in the early 50s, taking some 100,000 photographs in her lifetime. The images were only discovered in a storage locker shortly after her death in 2009. When the person who purchased the locker's contents published the images on Flickr, they quickly went viral and Meyer's reputation as a serious American artist grew and was solidified. I thought you might enjoy some of her amazing artwork. I was truly impressed by her grasp of composition and her haunting motif of putting herself into her photographic subjects, either through a reflection or a shadow. This theme of the invisible person or being a person that others look through without seeing them is particularly strong and poignant. So now it's time for us to say goodbye to the wonderful world of the Glenmo Museum and its many treasures and travel back now across the frozen tundra of Canada's northern climes to visit... While you're here, you won't want to miss the opportunity for a morning's ride to visit a foreign country. Only a few miles away is Canada, and just across the border in the province of Alberta is a Canadian national park. Reed Stationers on 17th Avenue. It was quite a walk from the Glenbow Museum, but I made my way in the front door and quickly passed all the cards, novelties, and party favors. To do so, we passed displays of paper and notebooks, Clairefontaine, Rhodia, Moleskine, Leishturm,
and I have to freeze here as I pass too quickly by this. I'll have to go back and look at this more closely, but those look like lovely pen storage options, don't they? I think they're Blackwing. And of course, the Blackwing pencils with one very large one not for sale. Now we are in the heart of temptation. This area underwent some extensive renovations recently to expand the display areas, mostly for Faber-Castell, Lamy, and Montblanc. Now that we are in the display case area, I'm going to freeze the frame on some specific pens that I want to blather on about and put up some more information. Remember, we're not buying, we're surfing pen porn, so put your credit cards away. If there are things that I pass over too quickly and you want more information on, Please let me know in the comment section below what caught your eye and perhaps I'll go back and focus on that pen or whatever in my next episode. I passed through the Faber-Castell display and, and there is the Graf von Faber-Castell Samurai and the pen of the year, the Sparta. The back wall is covered with a large Lamy display. Here are some Lamy Studios and the Lamy Dialog 3 and of course the Lamy 2000. And here is the expanded Mont Blanc display cases and wall. Star Walkers. One four six and one four nines in rose gold trim and gold. And palladium. And on the wall, we have the Prince Regent for a mere 8,995 Canadian dollars. And I'm gonna freeze here to look at this beautiful Meisterstück, Solitaire Calligraphy Gold, for a mere $2,200 Canadian. But they will throw in a matching notebook for free. I know that if I bought this pen, I would truly be solitaire right now. While we're staring at this beautiful pen, does it remind you of anything? This pen, perhaps? The Moonman M8 in the gold fleck, only $37.99 US, or $50 Canadian. That would save me, let's see, $2,150 Canadian. I could buy 107.5 gold fleck notebooks to go with it. Now we pass by the Mont Blanc Writer's Editions. This one being Shakespeare, who couldn't hold a pen if you put a musket to his head, but I digress. And down to a couple of pens conveniently located next to each other, Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy. The Burgundy Kennedy is particularly gorgeous in my opinion and worthy of a paused drool. Rudyard Kipling above. And I have to pause here slightly for my wife's sake. She took an immediate shine to these Lepit Prince Meisterstücks. And on to the Visconti case, where there are some Van Gogh editions. Yeah. 
and a Homo sapiens. I know this is an older edition as the new ones have ink windows, but my wife and I are planning a trip to Florence next year sometime, and I hope to visit the Visconti shop there and pick something out. A Homo sapiens is certainly a grail pen for me. I will in a moment. Okay. <laughs> and I find it interesting they are putting the Paniter pens in the same case as the Visconti. I suppose it stands to reason since they are the same designer's hand at work. And of course, no trip to Reed's would be worthwhile without a good look at the ink wall and my beloved collection of Roshizuku inks. Hello, boys. I'm coming to get you. Hello, boys. Just as I panned away here, a gentleman next to me came to pick up a gift pen, a Mont Blanc 146. I leaned over and said, You have excellent taste in gifts, my friend. Uh, he looked at me like I was from Mars and turned away from me to the sales clerk and said, Oh, thank you. It's very kind of you. What ink do I get with this thing? I don't know these things. Well, there are unbelievers everywhere, I suppose. Who is a blasphemer? And there is our Platinum Century 3776 testing display. And some more Platinums, including the new Carmelian color. At the checkout counter, there is a Platinum Plazier display above a whole lot more Faber-Castell. And another display case was right behind me with Parker. Some nice sonnets there. And I'm upside down with this case, but this section is diplomat. There are some arrows. and some upside down Watermans. And let's freeze again on this Waterman here for a moment. This looks like a Waterman Karen Amber Shimmer fountain pen to me. Now I'm a sucker for Amber, as you know. I'm also a sucker for that gold inlaid nib. That price tag really is steep, so someone please talk me down by telling me how awful this pen is. Now, I found this one on eBay for around $150 US, which is much more reasonable. Oh my God, it's starting again. I have to get out of this store. Get me out. Let me out of here. Get me the hell out of here. And so I bid farewell to Reed's, having escaped without spending more than a few dollars on some Clairefontaine. And they didn't have the J. Herbon. Blue de Minuit ink I was looking for. I'd practice saying that name too. So I asked the lady for the Bleu de Minuit. Pardonnez-moi, Fosher. Allez-vous les autographes de Talman Normage? Évêque, par exemple. Noël, allez-vous loitering? Leaping lizards! Let you! And she said, Oh, I don't think I have the Midnight. I have the Blue Knight. Would that do? Um, no. It didn't matter because I found a blue ink. When I got home, I had an IM from Claudia at Bauer Inks in Toronto. She's a pen BBS friend from Facebook and the founder of KWZ Inks. There was a photo of her gorgeous Moonman M800 in amber that had just arrived. If you remember, my first episode of Pass Gas was a rant about this pen. She said if they come down in price, she just has to have that pink and purple one. I pasted her a link to the eBay auction with a pink and purple M800 with the Moonman nib that I predicted would come down in price, and it did for only $34.50 US. What was Claudia's answer to my information about the cheaper M800? Well, here it is right here. I hate you. I apologized and promptly bought some KWZ Azure number no. 5. Now I'll have to start doing some ink reviews. So tell me, what's your favorite pen that was in this whirlwind virtual tour? 
Should I save up for that waterman or should I abstain? I'm thinking of doing another virtual tour of a second cool fountain pen and stationery store in the Calgary downtown plus 15 core. This store is called Madison plus page and is the shop where I bought my Visconti. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to receive an instant notification when new videos are uploaded. That just leaves it for me to say, thank you all for watching, and that's all she wrote.